So I do want to touch on one thing that you mentioned, which I think is really, really important, um, the power of listening. And I think a lot of times people don't listen to um, to what the other person's saying. Uh, you know, you you have built a tremendous business. You have a two point two seven billion dollar portfolio, three point seven million square feet, over close to three thousand units. And and, you know, there's a lot of power in listening and listening to what's being said and what's not being said. And so in your um, in, you know, within your journey, what's one thing that you would suggest to people to become a better listener? Um, yeah, so listening is, it's, it's, I think it's a big trait. Um, I'll take you to the origin of where I developed my listening. So for many years, I'm in the industry for about 28 years, but for many years, I was acting as an advisor, as a commercial real estate broker, focusing mainly on investment sales, structure finance, capital raise and syndications probably done over 300 transactions in my career, maybe 400 transactions in my career, where I was sort of like the linchpin between buyers and sellers, bankers and borrowers, uh, buyer's attorney, seller's attorney, and everything in between. And so in a market like New York City, it's a fast-paced market, lots of egos, lots of personalities, big deals, big transactions. You know, there's a lot of emotion that goes on. And so as the person in the middle, you'll always hear the conversation because they'll come to you as the negotiation goes about in order to get transactions done. And you get to see the best in people. And unfortunately, you get to see the worst in people as well. And so, you know, you have to pay a lot of attention. People will tell you everything that you need to know. They'll tell you everything. And a lot of times when we listen, we finish the sentences of people in our heads, right? Somebody starts saying something, you're not quite clear. You might finish this information in your head. You sort of like explain to yourself what was being said. So that's the first mistake, I think, in the space of listening. If you're not clear about something, learn to ask. Learn to ask the second conversation, what do you mean by that? Yeah. What does it look like to you? We forget to do that. Now, a lot of times during conversations, we don't listen. We are already preparing our answer. That's not listening. Right. It's not listening at all. It's really listening to yourself and trying to look good by coming up with an answer or coming up with an answer on the spot. It's yeah. extremely, extremely important to really, really understand what's being said in the conversation. There's always gaps. OK. And it's OK. And it should be. You should ask. Tell me what do you mean by that? What does it mean like for you? Um, it's also very important to relate to people. And if you think about neurolinguistic programming, NLP, right, I'm sure you've heard about it, John. Um, you know, people are divided to various groups, right? We have the auditories, we have the visuals, we have the kinesthetics. They communicate differently. And each yeah. one has a different way to relate to certain things. And in order to create a, a conversation that flows well, you want to be able to relate to the individuals you're speaking with, right? So if you're talking yeah. to kinesthetics versus talking to auditors or visuals, you want to communicate a little bit different than the noise level starts dying out and then you'll have a much, much clearer conversation. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll just add one more sentence, not to leave the audience confused in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, individuals relate and see the world very differently from one another. All right. It's your job as a professional to come in and step into their world. It's much easier to step into their world than to try to bring them into yours. Sometimes you always have this back and forth. But you really, in order to understand somebody, in order to truly listen, you want to step into their world. So identifying who you're speaking with and what sort of a individual is in front of you is extremely important and really very basic. One example would be the sort of language that that individual use as he communicates, he or she communicates, right? So, for example, an auditory individual will say things like or sentences like, I hear you. I hear exactly what you mean. And you know that his world is more on the auditory side, and then you'll act accordingly, right? The pace, the speed of speech, and all those different things differs between auditories, visuals. Visuals tend to speak very, very quickly. Visuals will say, I see exactly what you mean, right? The world to them, the process goes through visuals, right? So you want to have a lot more visuals, a lot more pictures if you're pitching a presentation, 
uh, and, and less focus on maybe on numbers and figures at that early stage. And then, of course, you have the kinesthetics, which, which requires a lot more attention uh, and a lot more patience uh, because it takes them longer to process things. Uh, it takes them a while before they'll feel Okay, everything with them is I feel, I feel you. Like it's, it's all a lot more personal to them. And so those are the individuals that will pay a lot more attention to your Excel sheets and stuff like that. So you really want to know who you're speaking with? Try, try not to try not to cut sentences off and don't finish them in your head. You'll notice that you don't always understand what the other side is fully trying to convey. So learn to ask questions. 30% of your time you should listen. I'm sorry, 30% of your time you should speak, 70% you should talk. Yeah. Uh, so I know, I'm not sure I said it the right way, pardon me. No, 30%. no, you're, you're perfect. I mean, and the only thing I would add to that is, and I love everything you just said, is the person who asks the question controls the conversation. And, and so there's a lot of power in questions. And you know, a lot of times salespeople will say, well, what do I what do I have to say? What do I have to tell them? Well, it's what do you have to ask? And so if you really kind of take your your whole game to being and growing your skill set of asking, listening and asking questions, there's so many doors that will open. That was great, Joe. I, I appreciate that. Yeah.